My name's Gershaw Nkutsi and you are watching Mallow TV. August is Women's Month and seeing that it is Women's Month, we are discussing various issues regarding women's health. From menopause, giving birth, becoming a mom, HPV, which is human papilloma virus, and also cancer. We're discussing all of this with our gynees and obstetricians. Now, talking about discussing it with our gynees, we are joined by Dr. Thalia Isaacs. She is brand new to the Malamed family. Dr. Isaacs, thank you so much for joining us right here on Mallow TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. So you're from PE. You you know about Eitnach, Utenaik. <laughs> yes, we do. You went to Gauteng, worked in state, and then you decided to come to Cape Town. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I finished specializing 2019. I got married in December and then I moved to Gauteng to be with my husband in January and then we had our first child. So the last two and a half years has been quite busy for me. Um, I started as a specialist in Gauteng. I worked in state for two and a half years and then I got this wonderful opportunity to move down to Cape Town. Now talking about two and a half years that's been wonderful, you are also blessed with the beautiful boy Noah who just celebrated his second birthday. That's correct, yes. He turned two last week, Wednesday. It's been amazing to watch somebody like grow and develop. So it's been lovely to be a mom. Now, Dr. Thalia Isaacs is an obstetrician and gynecologist. Now, she knows what it is to be a mom, and that's why we're having this conversation. Woman's body, it changes. You know, from being a tween, teenager, being a young lady, becoming a mom. There are so many changes during your life as a woman. That is correct, yes. It's such a beautiful journey from becoming a tween to becoming a young lady, an adolescent, a mom, a grandmother, um, the menopause, all of it. Now, if we talk about that also, HPV, it's one of those topics that not many people know of or don't discuss. Yeah. Education when it comes to HPV, human papilloma virus. Yes. So HPV, as you said, human papilloma virus is a very common disease, and it's the reason why we do pap smears. So. It's a screening test um, done to look for the changes that HPV can cause in a, in a woman's body. So it's a, a very common virus, and as you say, not many people know about it. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, the primary education around it is lacking. So yeah, um, it's a very common virus and is transmitted skin to skin, therefore can be transmitted sexually. Um, and there are different types, so there are types that cause just normal warts, low risk HPV, and then there are types that can lead to cancers, the high risk HPVs. And prevention, obviously, like you say, education and primary prevention through the vaccines, secondary prevention by doing um, pap smears, and then you have your tertiary and quaternary prevention, which is really managing disease that it causes. So it causes things like, as I said, warts, so a lot of genital warts, um, vulval, vaginal, cervical, and then more seriously or more impactful is the cause of cervical cancer, and that's what we're trying to prevent. So there are two types of vaccines that are available, and it's offered to young girls, as you said, you're preteens between the ages of 11 and 12, um, and you can either get a bivalent vaccine, so that prevents HPV 16 and 18, that's your high-risk um, HPV virus and the one that causes cancer. And then you have the non-avalent. So that one covers for um, vaginal warts and the, the HPVs that cause cancer as well. So yeah, we're aiming to try and implement and roll out the vaccines amongst the young women. Um, but we have been getting a little bit of pushback. As you know, with all vaccines, there will always be a little bit of pushback. But the idea is that if you vaccinate young girls before they become sexually active, before they get exposed to the HPV, we can prevent them from, you know, having to go through the ordeals of cancer and, and warts. My guest is Dr. Thalia Isaac. She's a gynecologist and obstetrician at Malamed Belleville. Uh, let's talk about HPV and before we continue with that, we'll go obviously to women having the period and change of period and heavy bleeding or heavy flow. If a woman has HPV, can she give natural birth? She certainly can. It depends on the extent of the disease. A large proportion of HPV is asymptomatic, and that's why we do screening tests. Screening meaning not symptomatic, looking for changes before they become disease. But it depends on the extent. So 
HPV at its worst will cause um, cervical cancer. And also depending on the stage of cancer, you might be advised by your obstetrician that it might be safer for you to give birth via cesarean section, depending on the extent of the disease at the time. All right. So there we go. More information. You can also contact Dr. Thalia Isaacs if you want to get information and just maybe just come and see her and have a chat. But let's talk about women. I mean, you being a mom and we spoke about being a tween, a teenager, adolescence, um, you know, becoming a gran. Your body changes as a woman. Mm -hmm. And with that also comes your period. Yes. Not regular, it changes, heavy flow, mm -hmm. mild. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so a period, sometimes the first period is, you know, a very exciting time in a girl's life when you become a woman. And then you have the complications that they are. So things that are not normal when you have period is excessive pain and excessive bleeding. Also, it's not normal for you to skip your periods for long extended periods of time. So if any of those things are happening to you, it's advisable to seek help from your gynecologist. Um, the most common things that I see in my practice is women who come in with very heavy flows. You shouldn't be, you know, becoming dizzy, collapsing, or you know, not being able to function or have any quality of life during your period. So if you are experiencing issues like that, not being able to go to school because you're having a period, or not being able to work because you have a period, or being embarrassed to go outdoors because of your flow, then definitely please do seek advice from your gynecologist. Also you see so many women, and I must and sometimes there could be cases that are different. Each case is unique and different. Yes, that's true. That's very true. The same disease presents differently in different women. PCOS, which I see a lot, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, presents in young women who don't see their periods for long, extensive pe times, like months, followed by heavy bleeding. The same disease in an older woman might present as somebody seeking help with fertility. And it's the same you know, pathology happening, but just presenting in different in different ways, and yeah. So even the same disease can can present differently. For any woman, sometimes also very like, oh, I don't know if I must go see the gynecologist or obstetrician because they're shy. <laughs> well, the nice thing about being a female gynecologist is that we understand, you know, what you're going through. Um, we also have the same fears and the same, you know, anxieties as you do. So we, we have a little more finesse <laughs> around such things. So you should never be shy to see your gynecologist. We are an ally when it comes to these things. At the same time also, sometimes women or couples, they struggle to conceive. That's true. Um, and then it's a, it's a long road to success. Yeah, it is, um, Gershon, and I mean, fertility is it's a sensitive topic. It's, um, it sometimes is a long road, but with, with help and advice, what might be very simple and easy for others might just take a little bit more work in another couple, but you should never give up hope. And you should always seek advice. Some of the causes of infertility are reversible. Um, some of the causes of fertility, infertility you know, they, they need a little bit more uh, assistance, you know, from the medical fraternity, but it's never a hopeless situation. So I would always advise, seek help and you will, you will get answers. Sometimes a lot of, you know, put, um, the challenge is not knowing. And once you have advice and you know what's going on, that alone, you know, alleviates a lot of the stress and anxiety around these things. And that's what we had to do. Uh, I'm sure that also being a guy in the institution, there might have been a case or two where someone has been pregnant and they think, I want to abort. Yes. You know, we don't want you to do anything illegal because that could um, harm you, it could harm your baby. Yes. Or what advice do you have for someone who's pregnant and they're thinking, mm, I'm too young or this was not planned? Well, if that is the case, then definitely you know, speak to someone you trust, speak to someone you can, you can get advice from, and then try and make your decision, whichever it may be, try and make it as early as possible in your pregnancy. The sooner you get help with wanting to have an abortion, the easier it is to do. Once you get to about 12 weeks and above, um, then it requires a medical doctor, two medical doctors to assist you and there are certain limitations put on what you, one can offer an abortion for. So if you know that, you know, you find out and you're about like four, six weeks pregnant, if you can seek advice from someone, a pastor, 
a parent, a social worker, a guidance counselor, a gynecologist, and make that decision earlier, then it's um, ad more advisable and preferable. At the same time, also, there's that moment where you go into theatre <laughs> and birth and that bundle of joy and new mom or mom's having a second baby or third baby. That must be an exciting time for you. It is. Theatre is like probably part of my favourite part of doing my job, honestly. Um, I love impacting women's lives, whether it's, you know, having a Caesar, whether it's the first or the second or the third or, you know, a hysterectomy for heavy bleeding, as we spoke about before. In that moment, you're changing a woman's life um, and it's always hopefully for the better. So theatre really is my happy place. <laughs> I mean, and then also, if you look at dads, also, they don't know what to expect. Yeah. All of a sudden, my wife is pregnant. <laughs> um, I need to go see a gynecologist. I'm sitting there, and it's just, you hit a blur. They are, they are um, a wonderful resource. I really do enjoy having the dads with the moms as well. They, it's wonderful to see a man look after his wife or his partner in that way, taking interest in her pregnancy, going along to the visits. They are the most excited when they see the baby on the scan. Um, and also they give you, they are a wealth of information as well. Sometimes, as you said, ladies become shy in front of the gynecologist and the dad will be like, no, 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 tell doctor. <laughs> and remember what happened last night or remember when your foot was paining or that was cramping. So I really do enjoy them. They are a wealth of knowledge. Now our guest is gynecologist and obstetrician, Dr. Thalia Isaacs, joining us right here on Mallow TV. Just before you go, a woman, once she hits 35 plus or 40 plus, mm -hmm. you're speaking earlier about pap smears. How important is it for a woman to continue with her health, continue with the checkups, and coming to see an obstetrician and gynecologist? It's very important. Um, we call it the mature woman or the mature woman clinic. So pap smears, you should be having a pap smear from the time of age of 21 or from sexual debut up until 65. So when you get to the age of 65 and you've had like three pap smears spaced out three, every three years and they're normal, that's when you can stop and with your, with your pap smears. Also we offer so many services to our, um, our older or more mature ladies, things like postmenopausal bleeding, sexual dysfunction, prolapse, um, mammograms. There's, there's so much that a gynecologist can offer the more elderly or more mature woman. Because your body changes. All the time, yeah. all the time. And we are here to keep up with that. And then also, um, just lastly, before you go, Doc, I said, I said that before, the question before this, is that people are still shy. <laughs> and what does Dr. Thalia Isaacs bring to the Malamed family? Um, I think I still am just the girl from PE. I really am the girl next door. My f catchphrase is your friendly neighborhood gynae. I try to treat my patients as if we are just two girls chatting and I, I'm just there to help you. And for moms whose uh, kids are growing up, their daughters are growing up, not wanting to have a conversation about the birds and the bees, um, the girl, her, her daughter's life changed into becoming a young woman? I've had a few um, ladies come to the gynecology appointments and they bring their daughters along with them and I think it's, it's amazing, it's good, it's excellent. The sooner you start um, get introducing your daughter to the gynecologist and getting her used to the idea that this is something that someone that I'm going to have a relationship with hopefully like throughout my life. The sooner you start that, the better. Our guest right here on Mallet TV, Dr. Thalia Isaacs, the girl next door, the gynae next door, and just a young woman wanting to change your life. And if you do require an obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Isaacs' details is on your screen. From all of us at Malamed, look after yourself and look after your loved ones. Until next time, goodbye.